Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's lovely to have you here. Before I start this video, please feel free to click on the icon that should appear ding 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 here, or ding 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 here, hopefully one of the two, and you'll be able to subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, you will be able to find lots more exciting videos where I talk about different topics, along with a link to my website. Um, these videos at the start were <laughs> very different to what they are now. I'm hoping I've got better at my videos, but I think they're a fun little thing for you to look at and hopefully escape the world for a little bit in my writing because that's when I write, that's what happens. I escape the world and it's fantastic and I want to share that, share that with, with you guys, with everybody out there. Now in my last video, I talked openly and honestly about mental health. Today I want to shift that honesty and the openness to a bit of a reflection piece really. I've always felt that it is important to talk honestly about all the subjects that I cover. And so far I've covered the fun of the Spice Girls to the beauty of scent, special educational needs and disability. I believe that honesty and vulnerability are a huge part of being human. They're massive. And as a writer, I use my creative side to highlight the aspects of our lives and society that I feel are fundamentally important. Now, others might not feel that they are, and everyone has differing opinions, which is what I love about people. With the current situation, things are not quite normal. Things aren't how they used to be. And one of those things that have been altered and shifted with what's going on is schools. Now I'm an educator. I firmly, 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 firmly believe in education, not just to enable academic achievement, but also to enable um, emotional achievement, mental achievement, and general all-rounded physical and mental well-being. It's vitally important. I work in a local village school that I absolutely adore, and if any of my colleagues are watching this, they probably and hopefully do know how much I adore it because it is just, just think about it, it makes me smile. I, I really, really love my job in that school. It's a small school, but it has such a dedicated team and they look out for each other. And not only that, they also strive to provide the best educational and overall human experience to school that they can. Now we, like all schools around the world, have had to adapt very quickly. It's meant new challenges and changes, which in turn means the school looks very different than how it used to do. These changes include children sat apart in their own desks, a small handful of equipment to hand, and a much quieter school. My feelings about coming back were mostly of utter joy. I've been keeping my partner safe by temporarily shielding with him for 12 weeks. For that time, the school remained open, but for only one or two students, instead of the 100 or so that we have usually. Just before I carry on reflect on, the, on my feelings of coming back to school and how it's looked like so people can have a wider understanding of what schools have looked like first-hand experience, instead of just on media, which can sometimes be biased, I think the phrase of reopening schools that has been used creates a very toxic and unhelpful image for people. It sort of insinuates that schools haven't been open and that teachers have just been, and indeed all staff, not just teachers, all staff have been sat at home just doing diddly squat, um, which is far from the truth. Schools were never fully shut. And throughout the lockdown, all staff have been working hard to ensure pupils in my school, um, the school that I work at, sorry, it's not I don't personally own the school, but the school that I work at, um, were given the tools and resources to continue their learning either at home or for the few that were in school. I just feel that needs to be said, that, that needs to be addressed, that phrase, it's very important to be addressed in my opinion. But anyway, as I was saying, before I rant off, I was feeling so happy to be back. So happy. To see colleagues once more, to see the children, and to do what I love doing. 
And I walked in last Monday with a sense of happiness, with a bit of a stride in my step. Step. I was extremely happy to be back. And there was a confidence that I could cope with these changes, I could manage them, I'll be okay. And my anxiety was about a four. So there was a little bit there, but it was manageable. You know, I, I was going back to something familiar, so that's okay. But I, my anxiety was up a little bit because some of it wouldn't be familiar. It would be a bit of a change. But I was confident I could manage it. So I walked into a classroom that I was assigned to in the little bubble that I was I was put in. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and the first thing I noticed is it did look very different. There were only nine tables out. Each table had the individual tray with the individual pencil case, individual resources, which is very different than how it used to be. And the usual areas for imagination and learning through play in this particular class were, were gone. And not gone as in thrown away, but gone as in hidden or turned around the other way, all stored away. And instead, there were only a small amount of resources that were easy to clean, and these were on a continuous rotor. Three days on, three days off. My anxiety slightly crept up when I saw this to about a 4.5, but I felt so happy to be back that it was still manageable. I kept it under control. That day was odd and it was really different, but again, I felt better being back at work, being in a routine. As the days went on though, I noticed something. This something that I noticed was a crucial point for me during a big anxiety attack. The anxiety was level nine, skyrocketing through the roof. It was the midweek, last week, midweek, and I felt it bubble on the surface that day. And soon enough, it all fell apart. And I had a bit of a wobble, but after a supportive talk with a fantastic colleague and the ones in my bubble, I felt as though I could wade through and I was ready to reset the next day. Get through that day, wade through all the anxiety, not let it consume me and beat me, and the next day I would reset. So the next day I came in, and that was when that something that I noticed before, before the anxiety attack, really hit me. I realised I hadn't, I'd heard something that I hadn't heard in the past 12 weeks. Now as corny as this sounds, it was something that made me feel happy because it was something that I was so used to hearing day in, day out in my workplace. Children were laughing. Children were enjoying themselves. They were playing at a distance, of course. They knew to do that. They knew to be safe. They knew that they had to keep the germs away but they were still laughing. They were enjoying playing with their friends. They were just happy to be back. And in just a few days, we didn't have to tell them about keeping distance. They knew, they got it, but they were still happy. They were still smiling because they got back into a routine. They were keen to learn and they were thriving. They still are thriving. I supported and still do support them in their learning. I supervised them when they were playing along with my colleagues, supervising them as well. And I felt my anxiety drop back down to the point now where it's about a two. And it has been for the past three days. Many things have struck me this week during the phase reopening of schools. And we've used that word, haven't I, that I said I don't like not phase reopening, the slow transition of more pupils back to school. I've learned I'm someone that needs routine to keep their mental health in check. I've learned I'm a passionate and not so bad educator. I've learned how much I love working in a school. I've learned how important school is for more than just academic. It builds a community. I've learned that when you have colleagues behind you and supporting you, no matter what, you feel like you can be okay. You can get through that day. I've learned that talking and showing vulnerability in front of colleagues and sometimes shedding a tear, never a bad thing. I work in a school that is built from hearts of love,
care and absolute brilliance. It doesn't say that we're all perfect. We all have our moments, we all have our ups, we all have our downs. Sometimes we don't get things right. Sometimes it's not all brilliant, but actually I love it and I always will. Right now I'm still scared and I do go through the waves of struggling to see how this will end, how we will navigate through this and how we will do the things that we used to. I'm still scared right now because I think how we're going to get the playground back to how it used to be. That school back to how it used to be, greeting them at the door. But then I see, bit by bit, small steps at a time, we'll come through this. And maybe we should be turning the values of society upside down. Thank you so much for listening to this, listening to this video. To all the educators out there, to all school staff, not just teachers, TAs, cleaners, receptionists, admin, one-to-ones, governors. You are all absolutely fantastic head teachers. You are all brilliant. And schools make a huge difference to children's life, lives. And I'm incredibly proud to be part of a school that is absolutely fantastic, as I said. Stay safe, stay well, and be kind to yourself. Thank you for watching. See you next time.